please pause the video and take a moment to read this important safety message. All right, in the event you've ever wanted to know how to measure the plate current, otherwise known as anode current, in a tube amplifier, stay tuned. All right, just a couple voltage and current basics we've got to understand to be able to do this successfully. One, for current to flow in a circuit, you must have a complete closed loop circuit like this is here. Two, if you're going to have multiple devices in series with each other and you're trying to measure the combined resistance of those, you add those together. Okay, so let's take a look at this circuit here. We've got 500 volts, right? We've got how many 1000 ohm resistors? One, two, three, four. So that's 4000 ohms. If you'll remember Ohm's law, right? I is equal to V over R. So in this case, 500 volts divided by 4000 ohms, there is 125 milliamps of current, otherwise known as 0.125 amps, flowing through this circuit right now. So just remember, regardless of the value of the components in a circuit, if it's a single circuit like this, the current flowing out of the battery or power supply and the current flowing back into it is identical, which means the current flowing through all of these resistors here is the same, regardless of their value. Another thing we could do is we could reverse engineer this a little bit, and we could use another version of Ohm's law here, the V is equal to I times R, and we could say we've got a 1,000 ohm resistor, we know there's 0.125 amps or 125 milliamps flowing through it, V is equal to I times R, we do the math, we would know that across this resistor we drop 125 volts. Now, all these resistors are the same value, so we would get the same results. But if this was a different value resistor, we might get a different voltage drop across this resistor right here. So if I've lost you at this point, don't fret. It actually gets easier from here, okay? We just need to review a little bit of that. So let's talk about how to find the plate current in a tube. And let's look at a typical circuit here. Let's say we've got a tube amplifier flipped upside down and we're looking at it, okay? One, we may not know this voltage here of the power supply. Two, we may not know how much current is flowing through the circuit. Three, we may not know the values of the resistors in this circuit, but maybe all we know is that there's a 6BQ5 tube inserted into this circuit. So let's walk through the simple steps here to find our plate current in this tube. Number one, let's recognize here that the current flowing through the cathode of the tube for all intents and purposes, is equal to the current flowing through the plate of the tube. In other words, this circuit we've got going right here, the amount of plate current is equal to the amount of cathode current. Now, there's a teeny little bit of grid current right here that plays into it, but it's negligible and it doesn't matter in our calculation. So for all intents and purposes of what we're doing, this current flowing here is the same as the current flowing into this tube. So if we want to measure the plate current, sometimes it's easier to measure the cathode current. You may ask the question, why is it easier to measure the current coming out of the cathode of a tube than it is the plate current going into the tube? Well, there's a couple reasons. First off, if this is an output stage, you typically don't have a plate resistor right here like we see in this picture. Instead, you have the primary winding of the output transformer playing this role right here, okay? And that's a little bit harder to measure. And for most amplifiers that are um, what we call cathode biased, otherwise known as auto biased, you will have a cathode resistor between the bottom of this tube, the cathode, and ground, which, which means it's easy to measure across that, okay? So let's show you how to do that. Up next, just to be safe, pull the tube, okay? Uh, technically, you don't have to, but um, I typically do. Pull the tube here. Measure the resistance across the cathode resistor here, okay? So find, the find your schematic, find from the cathode, find a pinout for the 6BQ5, find what pin that is, go put your positive lead on that pin, find the resistor that's going to ground typically, measure the other side of that resistor, and let's measure it. In this case, we measured 850 ohms, okay? Up next, we're gonna put the tube back in. All right, we're gonna power the, the amplifier up. We're gonna let it warm up for several minutes. Now we're gonna flip our digital multimeter here over to read volts instead of resistance or ohms. And we're going to measure the voltage drop across this resistor right here, okay? In this case, we measured 52 volts being dropped across it. It's pretty simple math at that point. We're just going to use Ohm's law. I is equal to V over R. The voltage here was 52 volts. The 
Resistance here was 850 ohms. What did we end up with? 0.061 amps, or we have 61 milliamps of current flowing through this tube at the cathode, which is, for all intents and purposes, equal to 61 milliamps of current flowing in the plate of this tube. We have now measured the plate current in this tube. So just in case you're wondering, how, do, how did I find which pin was the cathode, right? Well, it's always the bottom little plate right here that's kind of flat. You notice here in this case, pin number three was our cathode. We measured from pin number three of that tube down to ground um, to find our resistance and our voltage value, okay? Now we're looking at a GE spec sheet for the 6BQ5. And remember, we measured 61 milliamps. So we can look at this tube and we can try to figure out, hey, are we running this amplifier too hot? Are we potentially taxing our tube too much? So on and so forth. So what we do here is we look at the maximum ratings. Well, if you notice here, the DC cathode current, and DC means with no music playing into this amplifier, we're not measuring the AC current flowing through the cathode. We're measuring this thing at steady state with it just sitting there idle, no music or um, audio flowing through the amplifier. And it says maximum rating 65 milliamps. So we're, we're running okay there at 61 milliamps. We're a few percent down from that and uh, might be a little on the hot side, but it's certainly not over and beyond what this tube is rated to do, okay? Okay, I intentionally picked the 6BQ5 tube here, otherwise known as the EL84, because the data sheets for these have a lot of information. Some tubes, the data sheets are a little bit lacking, but I'll give you an example here. This gives you also Average characteristics, plate current, 48 milliamps. So at our 61, maybe we're running a little bit hotter than 48, okay? And then it'll even give you further breakdown. Hey, if you're running this as a class A amplifier, otherwise known as single-ended, zero signal plate current. Depending upon the plate voltage you've got, the screen voltage, and maybe the negative grid bias on the tube, it'll tell you what you should typically run this at plate current wise, okay? Which is, remember, the same as anode current. Here it tells you push-pull class AB1 amplifier value for two tubes. And let me show you why this is the case. A lot of amplifiers in a push-pull configuration, if you notice here, the 6BQ5 and this 6BQ5 that are in a push-pull configuration, their cathodes here are tied together. They come down, they share a single 95 ohm cathode resistor, okay? So when you're measuring across this resistor and you're doing your voltage and you're doing your calculations, you've got to remember, you've got two tubes worth of current here, not one. And this is why it's so important to have matched tubes in a push-pull amplifier because this tube, maybe it's older and weaker, it's pulling less current than this one. The way this gets divided out, this tube puts out less power than this one. OK, because the current's the same flowing through them here. OK, and what you end up with is distortion on your output because of that. But just in case you're wondering, this is the Dynaco Stereo 35 amplifier. But if you'll notice here, it talks about, you know, with minus 8.4 volts on the grid, you're going to get 62 milliamps here with 36. You're going to get 72. And remember, that's for two tubes. So you divide that per tube in this case, okay? Let's look at some actual tube circuits here, okay? This one's got 280 volts on the plate. It's a half of a 6S and 7. It does have a cathode resistor here, but let's talk about a few important parts, right? One, you might say, well, what, what about the current flowing down through this tube? Does any of it go through this resistor here? No, it doesn't. Remember, capacitors block DC and allow AC to flow through them. And that's why you have this cathode bypass capacitor right here to allow the AC flick signal to flow down through this, and the AC signal doesn't end up going through the resistor. However, your DC signal gets blocked by this cathode bypass capacitor, and your DC flows down through this resistor. So we can measure across this, know the voltage. If we measure the actual resistance, we can calculate the plate current flowing through this tube. You've also got a capacitor over here leading to the next stage of this amplifier, right? Well, remember, capacitors block, what? DC, so it doesn't flow through this. Everything we're talking about is DC current here at this point. Similar scenario over here, 375 volts on here. We've got a 300B tube. There is a little bit of trick current that might trickle in here, but not enough to, to worry about. And um, then we also here, we've got this little uh, hum, humbucker 
um, pot here. It's a negligence to this. And then we've got here what? A cathode resistor and a cathode bypass, okay? But if you'll notice, we don't have a plate load resistor here. We've got the primary of this output transformer. Now, when you read a primary value like 2,500 ohms, that is not the DC resistance of this, the, the transformer winding in this. This is the AC impedance that this winding reflects back into the circuit before it. So if we were going to use this and measure across it, we would actually have to measure the DC resistance involved. There. So we could redraw these circuits kind of like we had before. Instead of the B plus here, we've got a 280 volt battery. We've got this 375 volt battery here, right? That's kind of how this plays out in the real world. Then we could come here and let's say we did measure across this resistor here and we got 40 volts. Okay, well then 40 divided by the 680 ohm resistor, we've got 58 milliamps flowing through this tube. Similarly, we've got 425 volts up here. But what we're going to do is come measure across this resistor here. We've got 45 volts dropped across it. It's a 750 ohm resistor. That gives us 60 milliamps of current flowing through this tube here, which would be the same as what's flowing down through this transformer from a DC standpoint through this tube, down and out, back to ground, back up and around through the power supply. So what do you do if you have a circuit that is not auto biased or otherwise known as cathode biased, but instead is fixed bias? And this might not be the greatest representation of that, but it'll work for this illustrative purpose. We've got a circuit here. It's got 425 volts on B plus. B plus comes through the primary of the transformer, comes down through this 300B tube out to ground and back around, okay? So you might say, well, whoa, there's no cathode resistor here. How would I go about measuring that, right? God, that's gonna be tough. Well, there's another way we can go about it. Let's pull the tube, okay, just to be safe and set it aside. And at this point, what we can do then is we can get out our digital multimeter, flip it over to measure resistance, and we measure the resistance of the primary of this transformer here, okay? Keep in mind, this is not the impedance. This is the DC resistance, otherwise known as DCR sometimes on a transformer spec sheet. We measure 225 ohms, okay? What do we do then? We put the tube back in, we power the unit up, we let it warm up, right? We go and measure, we're dropping 13 volts. We measure from one side of the transformer to the other side, otherwise known as the plate of this tube. And we've got 13 volts there measured, right? Doesn't matter if your meter shows up negative 13 volts or positive 13 volts, it's just how you've got your, your wiring wired up here. Either way, you're dropping 13 volts across it. We do our math, I is equal to V over R, 13 volts divided by 225 ohms we measured. We've got 57 milliamps of current flowing through this tube. We just learned how to measure a fixed bias tube. Okay, a little trick of the trade here you see done in amplifiers sometimes. You might take your amplifier to a technician and this might be what they do to it for you. They may take a fixed bias amplifier that has no cathode resistor here in the um, circuit between cathode and ground. And what they may do is insert in line for you and just solder it in a 1 ohm resistor. Sometimes you see 10 ohm resistor used but something of a very low value. In other words, this one ohm resistor is not gonna make one bit of difference in this circuit, because if you compare it to the rest of the resistance and the tolerances on other things, it's negligible, okay? What this is, becomes is a sensing resistor. So in other words, you measure across it and maybe somebody puts some test point jacks on your amplifier so you can just measure from the outside across it. All of a sudden you're measuring the voltage across this and you can translate that into current. So the value of using a 1 ohm resistor, let's say you measured across this and you got 0 0.051 volts across this resistor of drop, you instantly know that is 51 milliamps of current flowing through this tube. So this is a trick you see done. I see it done on a lot of Fisher gear, like Fisher 500s and whatnot. Um, it's a simple, quick way of, of putting something in that you could later measure much easier than trying to measure across the primary winding of a transformer. This is not, a, the connections here to measure across are not always easy to get to. Okay, let's do this for real life. I've got this 300B tube pulled out. This is the cathode resistor right here, and this is the cathode bypass resistor across it. So I can just measure across right here from one side of this resistor to the other at this point. 
and let's see what we land up with. We're at 771 ohms, and this is actually a 750 ohm cathode resistor from the factory. This is why it's important to actually measure these, okay? 771 ohms. Okay, up next we've let the amplifier warm up. We brought it up on a variac, let it warm up for quite a few minutes here. And if you'll notice now, measuring across this, I've flipped my meter over to volts instead of ohms. And what am I getting? Let's just go with 66.4 volts DC. Okay, let's go do the math on that. Okay, if we remember, 771 ohms, we measured 66.4 volts. We do the math, we come out here with 0.0861 amps or 86.1 milliamps. If we look at a 300B data sheet here, we notice maximum plate current for manually adjusted grid bias or self-biasing, otherwise known as cathode bias. That is what we're running here. So we're running at 86 milliamps and we could be running as high as 100. I think the 86 sounds really good. Um, sometimes playing around with these uh, plate currents can you know, adjust how the amplifier sounds, um, running them hot or running them lean. Okay, there's some other ways to go about this, and you can see here they, they sell meters on eBay here that come with uh, sockets here that you would plug in line with your tube so you never have to take the bottom off of your amplifier. And then you could sit there and switch between the different tubes in your amplifier and measure the current in, in this meter. Others here, you buy the little socket and you, and you plug it into your multimeter and put it in ammeter mode and you can measure that current. All these little devices are in essence doing is taking the pin from the top of this, that's the plate pin, and in between that and the bottom pin out here for the plate pin, they're breaking the connection and they're inserting these two leads in line. So you're basically in line with your power tube at that point, okay? It's not a bad route to go. Heck, the guitarologist shows you how to make a $3 bias probe kit here, right? Pretty cheap. Here's the downsides to these, this route, and I'm not saying it's a bad route, they're just a few downsides. One, you're pulling high voltage outside of your amplifier. So if you happen to touch across these leads right here, you're going to know it. You're going to get 450 or 600, however many volts are on the plates of your tubes, on you instead. Very, very dangerous. Can be deadly. Number two, if you're measuring this, your tubes, and one of these comes unplugged, you may damage your tube because then you're applying grid voltage or screen voltage and no plate voltage. Bad things can happen, okay? Three, another downside. Let's say you bought this little probe here to measure some EL34s or KT88s. Well, a certain pin here is the plate pin, okay? But then you want to measure some 7591As, which have the same octal socket. Guess what? They use a different pin for the plate. So you got to go buy another socket now to do a different tube type and you'll run into that, okay? So if you bought this fancy setup, well, you're limited to the type of tubes that these octal sockets can read. And then, hey, what if I wanted to read an EL34? Well, then you got to contact this company and buy a whole set of these probes for a nine pin ELP34 configuration. The same with 7591As. You kind of get my point here. Anyway, not bad paths. These are all in the spirit of biasing your amplifier, and that's what we were talking about. You may not have realized it, but you're trying to get the current flowing through these tubes to match each other, either in the left channel versus right channel. That way your left volume is not higher than your right volume or vice versa. Similarly, if you've got a push-pull amplifier, you want the pair in the, in the push-pull to be pulling the same current through both of those tubes so that you don't end up with distortion on your output. And so that's what doing, making all these measurements is really all about. Hope you learned something. I had fun making this. We'll be back soon.